Have you ever wanted to battle in an arena, be worshipped and revered for your warrior prowess? Join a renowned Scion school or help a fledgling thieves guild achieve prestige, then the Dark Sun city-state of Draj could be for you. So today we're going to be talking about the city-state of Draj by Gabriel Cormier and John Settervist. This is available at Aethys.org, which is a great website for anything Dark Sun related. This was written in 2000 in the open game license for Wizard of the Coast. So what I'll be going over is the city-state of Draj, the Draj society, the people of Draj, the city life inside of Draj, race and characters, and a DM summary and some maybe some ideas that you can get to have your party travel within Dark Sun Universe and into the city state of Draj, which I brought my party into, and I'm having a blast. So let's dig in. Welcome to Draj, where warriors rule. Draj is where the warrior feels at home, where he will flourish under the guidance and tutelage of the great Draji citizens. Draj is the home of the warrior. Here, a true warrior will be amongst equal. Come to the flowery wars await. See the ma masters of archery, the arrow knights, as they demonstrate their prowess with the bow, the fierce eagle knights with awe any warrior with their weapon prowess, while the jaguar knights will make even the most seasoned veteran cover in fear. For those who would try something else, a game of Roxic will soothe the spirit. Draj is the great city-state of our wonderful god king at Zetztuk. Here, divinity is manifest by the spirit of our great king, who cares and protects for all of Draji. It is the home of the great clans who farm and fight for the God King. Come, witness the culture such as you have never seen before. Come and see the sacrifices to the elementals. Come see the thousands of people chanting in unison. Enter the wonderful Two Moon City, the glorious city of our mighty ruler. Stand in the might of our obelisks. The great sculptors of Draj will make the black obsidian come alive by their manifest masterful art. See the depictions of warriors of the great jaguar and the jaguar knights crushing the skulls of their opponents. March among the serpent's way and set foot in the jaguar plaza, basking in the shadow of the great pyramid and see the great skull rack. Stand in awe at the base of the great pyramid as rivers of blood pull at your feet and watch the great sacrifices to our people. Visit miles upon miles of fertile land, and land of such fertility that it does not exist anywhere else in the tablelands. Draj stands on an island surrounded by a mud lake. The fertile mud produces grains and high-quality hemp. Within Draj, the fortified Two Moon City compound contains the King's Pyramid and temples. The Draji people live in the flat mud or brick structures called pueblos. Their clans gather to discuss and act on matters beneath the king's attention. After ruling for over 2,000 years in Draj, Teklu Title recently died, slain by the first sorcerer Rajat. Teklu Title's son, Ezetsuk, has smoothly replaced him as god king. When Tetu Title died, his Templars lost their spells. Those Templars made a pact with the House of the Mind, who chose and brainwashed Ezetsuk to serve as their puppet king. The new king honestly believes that Tetutikle fathered him, and the Draji people accept his claim. When the Draji citizens loathed Tetutikle, obeying him only out of fear of his magic and Templars, young Atsetsuk has won the people's sympathies and admiration and their worship. The Draji culture and history depends on the dominant god king, Tetutikle, had surrounded himself with religious trappings and wove the Draji religion around his person. Even though they despised Tetu Litle, the population participated wholeheartedly in a basic sacrifice ritual. Location near the Silt Sea and total lack of mountain cover, the Draj particularly vulnerable to the destruction tear storms. Draji citizens believe they need to appease these elements with human sacrifices. Since the king publicly performs them weekly, or sometimes even daily sacrifices believed to keep the disaster at bay, it comes naturally for the people to worship their king. They also worship the two moons of Ral and Guthe. Artists carve the two moons into obelisks, statues, and shrines throughout the city. Draj has long been known for its hemp production. Its mud flats and fertile land produce good quality crops. These pro products are in demand in the tablelands and have helped House Texlaxia, Draj's main merchant's house, to gain a hefty profit. The steady income has helped the house to venture into more risky operations. 
the old god king helped build Draj after he finished exterminating the Wemix during the cleansing wars. He accomplished this by annihilating them and decided to build his own city on the ruins of the ancient pyramids and the mat vast mud plains of the east of Ram. Whether these pyramids were ancient Templars to the Wemix or remnants of an earlier civilization, no one really knows. Tetuklikle, the old god king, built his own period on top of the old one. He then constructed his own small city, the Two Moon City, around the pyramid. The citizens of Draj, who were the remnants of his cleansing army, then built their homes on the outside in the inner city. Um, this became known as the city of Draj. Warrior culture is prevalent in Draj. It's the respected citizens are the warriors. The artists glorify the, the violence with statues and obelisks and paintings. Merchants provide necessary services for these warriors. They, they don't hold the same respect as warriors. Thieves are the lowest sort of scum in Draji, viewed even worse than the mages. Around the city, various statues and obelisks can be found to represent the violence of the wars and all its bloody forms. The warriors even fight in the flowery wars. Great games held twice a year just outside the Golden Moon Gate. Warriors fight with lethal weapons and the losers risk being demoted, exiled, or even killed. Warriors and artisans who paint or sculpt violence receive the public's respect. Headdresses ind indicate a person's station within Draji society. Warriors wear feathers as a symbol of status among their peers and demonstration of exploits. Young warriors wear one feather to indicate their dedication to becoming a warrior. The other feathers must be earned in combat, such as the flowery wars. The Flowery Wars are week-long games of combat held twice a year. Warriors have a chance to gain these feathers in the wars, or worse, a feather could be lost. This is a horrible dishonor to the Draji, for the loss of a feather comes with a loss of status. Combat is real, with real weapons, and there is no simulated fights in the Flowery Wars. Losers of major events face exile and shame. Stunning leer tails worn on the head advertise an artisan station. Leers are large, warm-blooded reptiles that live in the tablelands. Around its neck at the end of its tail, the leer possesses a brightly colored membrane. This membrane is colored in bright reds, orange, and yellows, and sometimes blue. Artists receive the distinction of the leer tail as recognition for their work. The Templars wear their headdresses though they are not required to do so since their roles are clearly identified by their position. And higher ranks usually wear headdresses to extinguish uh, that with exquisite pieces of silk, intertwined gold, precious jewels, and whatnot. Um, the higher the rank, more elaborate. Slaves are everywhere in this culture, as you might know for the Dark Sun universe. And they do wear headdresses, but it's just plain headdress. Some a simple roll of cloth, a giant hair braid, some will wear just a simple skull cap to obtain limited protection from the harsh Athasian sun. So let's talk about the sacrifices because it's a major part of the city state of Draj. The people worship their king, believe in the divine power. However, sacrifices are mandated by the king to appease the elementals. Sacrifices are big events where a large portion of the population gathers in the city square to view and cheer the, as a victim is sacrificed. This practice is part of their society, and the people often look toward forward to a sacrifice, especially after a bad tear storm. The sacrifices are held on the top of the king's pyramid. The crowds gather in the Jaguar Plaza, the great square located in Two Moon City. As many as 10,000 people will gather to watch the ceremony. Sacrifices are usually held during midday. Not long after the sun has reached its zenith, people start entering Two Moon City an hour before the sacrifice to get a good view. A sacrificial victim is named the Unatin. The victim is usually a captured victim in the slave raids or a rare exile from Ram. Um, when no captured slaves are available, the Draji citizens, or the Draji slaves, I'm sorry, are sacrificed. On rare occasions, the victim of our Draji citizens who believe that their sacrifice serves a greater good to the city, a volunteer, as you will. These uh, usually, in these individuals usually who have lost their family in some skirmish or war or feel the daily struggle just for survival and just want to end it. The, the victim is painted in blue and yellow stripes, the color of the Draji Templars. 
The Unitin's face is painted white with large black circles around the eyes and red lips. The victim's hair is neatly trimmed and just below, just above shoulder length. And the victim does not have if black hair. The hair is dyed black. If the victim has no hair, such as mules or dwarves, in Dark Sun the dwarves are hairless. Their whole head is painted white. The victim is usually unwilling so they are made to drink a special potion that renders them almost unaware of the world around them. The Unitin are now docile in follow simple commands. The Templar guard the secret of this potion. Once all the people have gathered in the plaza, the long procession begins. The moon priests lead the way, walking side by side. Then some guards and soldiers follow them. The soldiers are usually human um, or half giant, dressed in the Drashi colors. The victim is, has four special guards called the Teclopatlin. Walk, they walk behind the guards. The Teclopatlins are mind benders and Templars. We'll get more into the mind bending later on. Psionics plays a huge role in Dark Sun and in Draj. So they follow their, they use the mind benders and the Templars control the victim. And, and if he fails to or she fails to follow commands, the lead one wears a mask. The mask is, represents a feathered serpent. The two of the Tectopatlins walk on each side of the Unitin. The one on his right wears a mask of a snarling jaguar. The Tectopatlin on the left wears a mask of a smoking mirror. The last one walks behind the um, sacrificial lamb and wears a mask represents the dark son of Athos. Then following them are the drummers, and the drummers have special human skin drums that beat loudly. They wear sleeveless shirts, green and red in color. They wear ceremonial skirts. The skirts are made of hemp, especially dyed with a color of difference uh, depending on where uh, one looks at. Um, all of the shades of color represent are a light green. The drummers sing a loud war chant. Once the procession reaches the base of the pyramid, the lead priest walks up to the top, um, and he's wearing an elaborate headdress, uh, and then rising nearly two feet high is this headdress, and, it de and also descends all the way down to the priest, high priest's knees. He also has a staff in hand, a polished Agafari staff topped with a symbol of two, the two moons. The drummers stop their beating at the sign of the head priest. He then makes his way to the top of the pyramid in silence. The crowd staying silence. Once the priest reaches the top of the 200 foot high pyramid, he stops. He then circles the sacrificial stone, a polished obsidian slab 10 feet high, 6 feet wide. The slab stands upright, resting against the top of the pyramid. It reflects the sun and casts an eerie light on the Teclotatlan. At the point, a high priest asked for the Atsetstuk to appear and perform the sacrifice for the good of all of Drashi. The king then appears to the loud cheer of the crowd. The drummers then start their beating as the slave or the captured soldier make their way to the top the crowd's chant matches the drummer's beat as they beat faster and faster and faster as he reaches the summit the teclopatlin grab him and attach him to the obsidian slab the aratone's arms and legs are secured with a giant hair hardened by the blood of countless victims the king then smashes his fist through its chest. The king's robes usually turn red with the blood of this slave. High-pitched primal screams are heard from the top of the pyramid. The king then rips out the still-beating heart. Then he holds it high up, offering it to the sun, the blood from the victim dripping down his arm. He then inserts his heart into... The, out of the victim inside of a hollow statue built for this purpose 
At the base of the statue is a small opening leading to two small gutters that descend on each side of the stairway. When many of the victims are sacrificed in one day, the blood of their hearts flowing down the gutters will form a pool at the base of the pyramid. The statue is a simple one, showing a kneeling warrior screaming in pain and anger. The victim's body is then thrown off the pyramid where the king collects it. The king's slaves collect it and use it to make drums and other glorified trophies, and the skull is impaled on the great skull rack. The king then gives his usual discourse to his subject and tells them that the sacrifices have appeased the elementals. As a dungeon master, it's, this is a great visual for you to introduce your characters to. What a great scene it is to have this procession of march up and the sacrifice to happen in front of them and just see how your characters react. So let's talk about what the people of Draj usually wear. They kind of wear bright colored short shirts and skirts. The skirts are often made of hemp and they're readily available all throughout Draj. Even the nobles dress in hemp fashion, though sometimes they will wear robes. The people of Draj wear headdresses on their heads. These headdresses are made of hemp or giant hair for the most of the population, but the great warriors and nobles and wealthy artisans wear more elaborate headdresses. These superb headdresses can be made of silk, hemp, inlaid with precious jewels and gold. Let's talk about the slaves. It's something that you have to get into when you're talking about Dark Sun. There are two different types of slaves in Draj, the foreign and the domestic. The foreign slaves are slaves used by the Templars. They tend the massive fields outside the mud flat, while the domestic slaves are slaves to the nobles and Templars, and they're used inside the city. Foreign slaves and other foreigners captured inside the city um, for various reasons the slaves are brought in from other city states. The domestic slaves are usually Draji citizens down on their luck who have been sold who, who have sold themselves or been sold into slavery. This is usually not a permanent arrangement for them. Um, then they can usually work themselves out of this predicament. Like I said earlier, criminals in Draj are reviled and they only receive one sentence and that's death. The sentence is carried out in one of two ways, execution or caging, which means a slow death unless rescued. Captives sentenced to caging are brought to the prisoner cages that are strewn all throughout the city. The cages are guarded by a minimal staff. So rescue is possible. The Draji Veiled Alliance, which we'll get into later, often orchestrates diversions to permit groups to rescue captives for a fee. A rescue must be organized fairly quickly, though these captives rarely last for more than a week inside the cage before either starving to death or being sacrificed. The Templars enforce the law in Draj, but order is rarely a problem. Strangers sometimes sow discord within Draj, unaware of the city-state's culture. The Veiled Alliance also stirs up a little trouble, although that doesn't happen often. So let's talk about Draj itself. The only entrance into Draj is on a mud flat. It's by a stone bridge that gaps the mud surrounding Draj in the mud flat. Visitors entering Draj will be overwhelmed by the seemingly endless fields of grain and hemp that they will see as they cross this bridge. These fields are the bulk of the Draj's exports. Templars oversee the distribution of slaves, the collection of harvests, um, the processes of fiber, the distribution of grain to the population, the enormous fields are carefully segregated into plots and farmed by slaves. At the entrance of Draj on the mudflat, two small towers greet travelers to the warrior city. The twin towers are small square pyramids guarded by moon priests and half giant guards. No wall borders the vast mudflat, the mud being enough of defense to stop anyone attempting to invade. After one passes the Twin Towers, uh, the blood-red bricks of the roadway summon the visitors into the city. The flowery war fields is the first thing a visitor will see. Uh, beyond that flowery war field lies the Golden Moon Gate, and the, the only entrance into the Golden Moon Gate is into the city of the Two Moon City. The Golden Gate is uh, one meter thick, a wooden gate inlaid with obsidian, and a decorative tracy kind of copper over it. Slaves polish the copper, keeping it a natural color and preventing it from oxidizing and then turning green. 
um, a core of guards discourages theft of any of the copper. The city is surrounded by the mud moat and there's penalty for entering the moat is death. After going through the Golden Moon Gate, visitors walk on a blood red stone paved road that leads to the Palace of Gladiatorial Combat. Along the road to Moon City are the artisans and merchants districts, as well as numerous wooden pens that showcase the Drajes, gladiators and captives. The central road leads through both districts. The merchant district borders the central road to the right, while artisans have their shops on the left of the main roadway. Along the roadway, just before Tumin City, lies hundreds of brightly colored merchant tents. The merchants sell all types of goods, from clay pots to meats to hemp ropes. To the right of the main roadway, behind the merchant districts, one can see the top of the Great Pyramid. The Great Pyramid is located inside the Tumun City, the inner city of Draj. Tumun City is the king's domain where the important buildings of Draj are located. Inside two moon cities, the visitors can find the Palace of Gladiatorial Combat, the Temples of Ral and Guthe, and the House of the Mine, as well as the grain silos and jaguar pens, plus the Great Pyramid. The King's Arsenal is also located in there and contains many of the weapons and war machines, all used for numerous wars in Draj. There is a nine meter high wall of stone that surrounds the square of the two moon city. No beasts of burden are allowed inside the two moon city by decree of the king. The only exception to this rule is the wild animals used for gladiatorial combat. Not even the moon priests can bring beasts or burdens inside the two moon city. The only entrance to the two moon city is through the stone bridge that passes over the mud moat. At the entrance stands the Jaguar Gate. The gate stands 10 meters high and is three meters wide. Once the gate is closed, the gate forms a snarling Jaguar face with teeth and eyes of polished jade. Rumors say that those who touch the Jaguar face at night when the doors are closed invoke its guardian and are devoured by the Jaguar. One well-known tale is the story of one warrior who said that he was not afraid of the gate and went up one night to touch it. He was found dead the next morning, his arms ripped off and it piled, top, piled atop of his, his chest. His decapitated head, with half the scalp missing, was resting on his crossed arms. His tongue was sticking out of his mouth and his face was a smi smiling death grin. An ear of corn was also sticking out of his mouth. Obviously, people of Drosh stay clear of this gate at night. On entering the Two Moon City, one stands on the roadway called Serpent's Way. Serpent's Way is a wide road of bricks that leads up to the arena. The road is lined with numerous obelisks, statues of warriors, and beasts of Athos. One cannot look in any direction without seeing the glorification of war and violence. At the end of Serpent's Way is the Jaguar Plaza. The Jaguar Plaza is a large square in front of a great pyramid where the people gather and watch the sacrifices. The plaza is cornered by big obelisks. In the center of the plaza is a beautiful marble fountain. The statue on top of the fountain depicts a grotesque dragon breathing fire. The dragon is made of stone and meticulously sculpted. The Black Guards are three famous residents of Draj. The people call these guards heroes of the city. The Black Guards are enormous obsidian golems created by Techno Title. They resemble their creator, broad, squad, jowly, thick-lipped, and flat-nosed, with narrow eyes and sharp cheekbones. One black guard guards the lower levels of the pyramid, while the other two protect the temples of Ral and Guthe. It is rumored that Techno Title originally created several dozen of these golems, but no one knows what happened to these others. Um, or even if they existed. The Black Guardians are now a symbol of power among the population of Draj. They are paraded semi-annually by the king to show off his power. The parade culminated in the secret rite inside the temple, where only the king and his high templars intended. Now that Tetlo Title is dead, the golems have stopped responding to commands and have become inanimate. The scions of the House of the Mind have been able to keep the population ignorant of the fact. During parades, several scions combine forces and am animate the obsidian giants. The population believes that they are still under the control of the king, and even though the Black Guards are less animate, they are still worshipped as heroes. Let's talk about the Jaguar Gate. Um, speculations regarding the nature of the gate's defense tend to focus on the gate itself. Some believe that the gate is magical item of great power 
that is activated by touching it at night. Reports of witnesses who claim that Gates victims looked terrified and lashed out at open air around them have led to rumors of an invisible, maybe more than one enemy that guard the gate. Other scions in particular would tie victims um, behavior to the manifestation of a powerful harbinger, leading to a theory that the gate is sentient and possesses psionic powers. Attempts to contact the gate through psionic means have all failed, though leaving the scions baffled to the theory of so, without any evidence. The truth is that the gate is not sentient, nor is it magical or psionic in any way. While wizards and scions both believe the gate to be protected by some supernatural power that thwarts attempts at divination, they are both mistaken. Let's talk about the Jaguar Gate. A powerful defiler in the God King's court angered him for some unknown reason. The Dragon King became furious, struck the defiler down with dreadful magic that trapped her soul. He then bound the defiler's spirit into the gate allowing it to manifest itself at night. Isolation has driven the spirit so mad after so many years of imprisonment that its hatred has been fueled for anything free living. The spirit was once capable of speech and conversation, but today it just seeks nothing but to destroy anyone venturing at night. The spirit is ethereal and thus invisible, but those that can are themselves invisible can see this being as well as if you have true sight. The Great Pyramid. Inside Two Moon City, one can find the most impressive building in Draj, the Great Pyramid, or the Father and Master Temple, as it is called by Tetlo Title. The Great Pyramid is a wonderful construction of stone and marble. It's the tallest building in Draj and the most stunning. Even the two temples dedicated to Rol and Guthe aren't as striking as this Great Pyramid. The building stands 200 feet tall with nine different levels and was built on the remains of an earlier smaller pyramid that the God King found when he found a Draj. Statues of various Draji culture and icons decorate the corners of each level of the pyramid. There are statues of warriors eating the hearts of fallen foes, statues of winged serpents, statues of jaguars, obelisks, numerous icons. Some with the skulls are painted with death grins. Some of the dark suns painted on all sides, some obelisk depicting the moons in various phases of the night sky. The Black Guard do not patrol the lowest level, only the king enters this level, and it contains only one room, the Crystal Garden. The Crystal Garden contains perfect quartz, replicas of plants that are the finest jewelers in the Seven Cities. The Veiled Alliance speculates as to the purpose of the Crystal Garden, but no one really knows what the room is for. The plants are constructed by conventional jewelers and hold no magic except curses inflicted on anyone who breaks the fragile leaves. In my campaign, I use the God King is collecting souls and putting them into these crystals and using that for magic. The Temples of Raal and Guthe. The Temples of Raal and Guthe are twin temples dedicated to the two moons of Aethys. The temples are run by the moon priests. A black guard watches over each temple, and the citizens of Draj often come to the temple to pay tribute to the moons. The Palace of Gladiatorial Combat. Gladiators fight in games in the Palace of Gladiatorial Combat. The arena is an amphitheater unlike other arenas in other of the city-states. The combat level is many feet below ground level, surrounded by rows of seats. The combat level is many feet below ground level, surrounded by rows of seats. The seats surround about two thirds of the arena, with the rest taken up by the palace. On days off of combat, gladiatorial slaves are displayed along the red brick way that leads from the golden moon gate to the arena. The House of the Mind. The House of the Mind is a psionic school of Draj. This is where all aspiring scions come to master the way. Tetlo Title had a special interest in the House of the Mind, and so the scions are well trained. The House of the Mind is run by old Ixtabi the Blind, and he is currently in charge of Draj, even though they have allied themselves with the Moon Priests. The scions hold the real power, they control the young Etzetstuk's mind. Even though they have allied with the moon priests, the scions hold the real power. They control the young king's mind. The scions of Draj also value its warrior culture, such as training in the psychokinetic and cyclometabolic arts. And it's second to none in Draj. Excellent training can be found for price and how to integrate psionics into your combat. Because of the warrior culture, Draji scions are sorely lacking in their clear sentient and telepathic domains. 
They view the arts as sneaky and lacking in glory. Let's talk about where your party is really going to spend most of the time. That's at the bar, and each one of these modules should have a really distinct one. And this is called the Snarling Jaguar. It's located in the Merchant District in a small alley behind a main vendor stall. It is the Snarling Jaguar, the typical of the Draji architecture. It's low, square building. Houses one of the better known pubs. At the entrance, a small sign with a carving of a Snarling Jaguar announces the establishment. With the carving made of pieces of mechalite bone held together by giant hair. The jaguar face has enhanced by a small obsidian pieces fixed into the sun bleached bone, giving it a twinkle when the moonlight strikes the obsidian. The single door is made of bone and a gafari, again held together by giant hair. To the side door, a small obelisk depicting the warrior standing over his victim reminds any visitor in that in Draj, the obelisk warrior has its victim's head speared at the tip of his sword and many of the feathers on his head. At first step, inside will be enough to mark this establishment as different from many of the other watering holes in the city-states. The proprietress, a half-elf ne named Nekalhal, has made it a point to remind her customers that Draj, the way of the warrior, is supreme. The walls are covered with paintings of warriors depicting many glorious battles, either two warriors facing off against each other, some warriors slaying a beast. Many of the bar's awnings are trimmed with a row of sun-bleached white skulls that were actually Nekahal's victims when she was actually a gladiator. She does not like half giants at all and does not serve them and kicks them out of the bar. So this, not, so nothing in this bar is of their size for half giants. Anyone entering immediately will be assaulted by the smell of pulk. This is a main drink served in Draj and by a number of different smells, the customers are allowed to smoke, filling the air with the acrid smell of some of the herb that's growing. On most days, the bar is filled with merchants and artisans that come here to relax after a hard day's work. Occasionally, nobles can be seen inside, though they do not belong to the regular clientele here. The Elven Markets. The Elven tribes often visit Draj in the days prior to Ram's problems, but now a few tribes actually visit the city. Elves used to deal in weapons of all sorts and anything else that was they were willing to pay for. The Clearwater Elves are still part of the Draji trade and have maintained their presence here. The Elven Bazaars are located at the outer edge of the trade district. A score of abandoned buildings and open courtyards serve as the Elves marketplace. They set up their tents and show their wares to anybody to see. Almost anything can be bought there from the Elven Bazaar for a price. Spell components, poisons, expensive and risky are to procure. The Elven Bazaar is not a place for the faint of heart. The elves will often cheat, lie to get a better price, and the buyer should beware. These are a problem, although most thieves are the elves. No Draji citizen would ever be caught stealing, as this is the lowest form of scum. Let's talk about the underbelly of Draj, the Veiled Alliance. The Veiled Alliance is one of the least capable of all of Aethys. Their current leader, Chamali Zachili, is a minor preserver, pretending to be a very powerful one, but she's just bluffing, and she's the leadership of the Veiled Alliance. When her mentor and former leader, Texali, died, she became now the leader. Now, only her friend, Kakatan, knows her secret. Kakatan is big, muscular slave who also has abilities of a scion. The Veiled Alliance in Draj is largely ineffective. Chamali is reluctant to condone plans that would expose her secret. They have no real victories under their belt. How I played this was that the player characters would befriend the Veil of the Alliance and be able to sneak into the pyramid through them and through the pyramid underneath that. It's a great way of just incorporating them in a heist scene, which is what I have my characters doing. Approaching the city. As travelers approach Draj, they may notice sun-bleached bones lying and half buried in the sand on the side of the road. The bones are the remnants of slaves that have tried to escape, but were too weak to travel under the merciless sun. Weak and starved, these slaves did not go long before collapsing on the side of the road. Travelers will notice the distinct shape of the pyramid rising in the air and the long stone bridge that connects the Draji mudflat to the main trade routes, spanning the large thick mud that encircles all of Draj. Fields of crops also attract the eye, the toiling slaves working relentlessly and under the sharp tip of the Templar's whip. The city gates. Upon reaching the stone bridge that spans the mud, there are no gates at the end of the bridge. There are two small towers manned by Templars and half-giant guards. 
The towers are small replicas of the giant pyramid. It is here that the visitors will be interrogated and questioned about the purpose of why they're coming into Draj. The Templars will ask the business travelers um, what are they coming to do, what they plan to sell or buy in the city. Visitors may be searched for any reason at any time and possessions of any spell components is illegal and punished severely. Also, use of magic is strictly prohibited, so any magic users must refrain from using their art or hide it very well. Templars typically charge five bits per leg for per visitor, thus a dwarf will be one copper, while a kank will cost three. Crossing the bridge will give access only to the mud flat. To enter the city, one must go through the Golden Moon Gate. The, moon, the mud moat surrounds the city, and the only entrance is the Golden Moon Gate. So let's go into some of the city-state of Draj here in the intrigue. Who rules? It's Atsotuk. It's, um, he's a human psionicist. He's currently the ruler. He is worshipped and respected by his subjects. But who really rules is Akstabi the Blind. Um, he's the leader of the alliance between the Scions and the House of the Mind and the Templars. The Templars have lost all spell power since the demise of their former king, Tetno Title. To preserve the order of Draj, the Templars and the Scions agreed to pass on the rulership to his son, a young scion named Atsetsuk. His mind has been altered to make him believe that he was his son. The affairs of the city are still run by the Templars who bowed to the orders of Matsolixako. The population is 15,000, 60% are human, 15% are dwarves, 15% are elf, 5 are mule, 3% are half elf, 2% are half giant. There's some Thry King and halflings. Um, 640% are freemen, but 60% are slaves. Very few are the foreigners. The emblem is a ferocious jaguar, is the main symbol of the city state of Draj. Other symbols that represent the cities are violent warrior culture and the feathered serpent, the smoking mirror, and various statues and obelisks represented death and war in all its forms. The economy. Draj's main imports are livestock, slaves, and uh, copper. Exports include rice and wheat, hemp and hemp products, bricks, and expensive linens. Major trade routes do exist to Kern and Alderich. Jar is one of the t Draj is one of the tableland cities to trade with the other city states, where um, the majority of Draj's trade is conducted since chaos overtook Ram south through the Silt Kromlin is the only safe way to reach Nibane and Golg and the rest of the tablelands. Armed forces. Draj maintains an army of approximately 2,000 well-armed and well-trained troops. These troops are divided into three groups. The Jaguar Knights are the highest rank, the Eagle Knights, and then the Arrow Knights. They are elite archers, but lowest ranked of all the troops. All the troops are proficient in Draj's four main weapons, and troops are well-versed in psychological warfare tactics to scare the enemy and cause confusion. Draj rarely makes use of mounts in combat, that all Drajji citizens are proficient in at least one of the four main weapons as well. So let's go over some of the magical items that are in this uh, module. There's the Amulet of Arcane Insight. This elaborate carved elven bone amulet grants the wearer a plus 10 bonus to knowledge and arcana checks, which is that's pretty sweet. Belt of Glory. This belt is made from interoc interlocking hexagonal gold plates it grants a wearer a plus six to uh their strength there's a new psionic item it's a jaguar tooth these plus one weapons are created at the house of the mind and are used by draji's most important military officers the bearer of the jaguar's tooth is immune to fear and compulsion effects and benefits from a plus three resistance bonus to saves against telepathic psionic powers you also have the ring of mind shielding this ring functions as its magical equivalent of ring of mind shielding except it protects the wearer from psionic attempts at reading one's thoughts not magical ones though let's go into the three prestige classes that are, that are in this module the arrow knight the arrow knights form draji's corpse of elite archers rank third among the special warriors forces of draj these archers might with the bow is perhaps unrivaled in all of the tablelands. Although they form an elite group, the archer knights are the least respected of the Draji's three elite forces. 
as range attackers, they do not gain the glory of that Ra Draji culture places in the hands of hand to hand combat. However, their place in the Draji military earns them some measure of respect, and their military's role importance is unquestioned. The Arrow Knights come exclusively from the ranks of the single or multi class fighters and psionic warriors. The Eagle Knight. The Eagle Knights are among the most brutal and fanatical Draji warriors. They are more than willing to charge headfirst into battle for the glory of Draj and their god king. The Eagle Knights are ranked second among the elite warrior forces of Draj, surpassed only by the supreme battlefield warriors, the Jaguar Knights. Most Eagle Knights are fighters and brutes with a fanatical devotion to the god king in their inner city. Though the Eagle Knights can come from any class, the majority come from the ranks of warriors. But an occasional fanatical bard or a member of some other class is not unheard of. The Jaguar Knight. The Jaguar Knights are Draji's finest elite warriors. They undergo intense training, learning to put fear into their opponents before they strike. Their skills are in the battlefield are unrivaled in all of Draj. And as they are immune to fear, they can wade through vast amounts of foes cleaving their way. Jaguar Knights are flawless in their own in other Draji's eyes, resistant against cowardly mental attacks and powerful enough to strike down any foe. Jaguar Knights come most exclusively from the ranks of warriors classes for the Psychic Warrior class. Occasionally, a particularly determined member of another class can become a Jaguar Knight, but these are very rare. Okay, let's go into these NPCs here. You have Etsetuk. The king of Draj, he's a human male. He is the young king of Draj, began his life as an orphan under the care of the House of the Mind. His parents were found dead in a back alley with the young children being left for dead. Initiate of the House of the Mind found the boy and brought him back to the compound. Asetsuk was raised by the Scions in the House of the Mind, being tutored in the way of it at a young age. Although not possessing great innate abilities, the young trainee became a good Scion through the years. When the House of the Mind needed a replacement for Tetu Tutle, their young orphan was the perfect choice. With no family other than the Scions, there was no need to eliminate the source of the contention. The young Scions was easily molded and dominated to his rule. The Scions entered his mind and made him believe that uh, he was Tetu Tutle's son. As that Suk was com has complete faith in the House of the Mind and readily accepts their counsel. However, the new king is starting to believe in his own divinity which could pose a problem for the future. Chiloactek, a human male. He is the long-standing commander of the Draji forces after three decades as a soldier, and two of those as commander of the Draji force. He is well known in Draj. He commands the forces with strong discipline and does not tolerate failure. He is quick to demote those who make mistakes and yet slow to promote unless great acts of bravery or tactical precision are done. He is a firm believer in the divinity of the old god king. With the death of the supreme commander, his faith in the divinity of that ruler has somewhat shattered and he is beginning to suspect that the new god king is not who he claims to be. However, he would never dream of rising up against the ruler of his great city. Chamali Zachila. She is the leader of the Draji Veiled Alliance. Even though her magical prowess isn't as great as her subordinates, her magical power has grown over the years as she has been too busy leading the small Veiled Alliance chapter. And in order to keep her lack of ability secret, she cannot experiment too much in public. She takes great pains to hide her secret through the grumblings of her lack of magical display has gotten worse. However, no one has yet dared to challenge Shamali's leadership. Emotek, he's a human cleric he emotek is an imposing figure he stands six and a half feet high with a strong muscular build he is arrogant self-confident having risen to his position by carefully maneuvering hard work although in his 40s emotek is great has well respect in the population of draj and many heed his commands with a fear-born devotion his young priests though respect his power resent his arrogant nature they are rarely well treated and he does not hide his contempt for lesser trained pupils. However arrogant, dour in nature, his devotion to the element of fire is complete. He runs the biggest temple in all of Draj, with many citizens coming to his temple for the favors. Emotek believes this is proof of the fire superiority of their, over the other elements. Emotek ori origins remain unclear, although the Draji citizen, he does not have any family here nor has anyone ever been able to learn anything about his past. Next, Tabi the Blind. 
he is in charge of the House of the Mind and has been for several years. He was first to contact the Templars on about a new plan when he learned of Tetlotitle's death. He is now the true leader of Draj, directing the new king in coordination with the Templars on the affairs of Draj. He is confident about their plan can work, and but knows that the chaos would ensue if the city knew the truth about the new god king's origins. Though he disliked misleading the population, he believes that it is the only way to protect the city from the death and destruction that happened in Ram. Uh, he is a small man, standing a little over five feet tall, stooped, yet possessing a vitality that some young science cannot match. Anyone thinking he is a helpless old man will click, quickly be proven wrong, should that person ever challenge him. Cargash. Cargash has been the House Temp Texali's chief defiler filer for many years and can continues to serve the House even through the change of leadership. Cargash will support the leader of House Texali as long as his role isn't diminished. Matsolixo. The High Templar of Draj, Matsolixo, is very intelligent and cunning, a middle-aged man who he happens to well-toned body that shows no sign of being pampered life he has built around himself. He was presented with the Templar by his parents at a young age, and he took to training like he had been bred for it. He rose quickly through the ranks of the Templars and established himself as a wor worthy opponent of all who stand in his way. Nexuxlia a dwarf, the long-standing head of the Templar, Temple of the Earth, in Nexuxle, is a well-liked presence in Drash. She runs the temple in typical dwarfin fashion with dedication bordering on obsession. She serves her element well. Standing four and a half feet tall, she has strong build for dwarves and her body is rock solid like her patron element. Hairless like all dwarves, Nexuxle has a strong jaw, slightly drooping eyelids, and a tattoo of a fierce earth elemental on her skull. She has piercings in your ears with wooden rings a small spike of a blue gaffari through her nose she oversees the fields and gardens of the nobilities she has been tending for the two draws for over the king's age and has risen to her position through hard work and careful maneuvering canu luxley as the only member of the water temple in draj Tana Luxley look, works long hours with little reward to keep his temple afloat. Like many half-elves, he prefers his solitude and has not taken to any, any pupils in a few years. He has been in Drudge. To be fair, though, not many pupils come knocking on Tana Luxley's door. His melancholy attitude does little to attract others. Tana Luxley carries out his duties to the water with fierce devotion, taking the fertility of the region as a sign that the water is an important part of this world, as the other elements. The people of Drudge ca carry little respects for him however in convincing the population that water is powerful as fire for example is a hard sell there are a ton more npcs in this i'm not just going to go over every single one but there's plenty of things to pick and choose for what you want to do in draj and how you want your players to traverse it so that's about going to do it here for the city state of draj i look forward to hearing what you guys are going to do for your group my group just ran through it, and if you'd like to see that, they're in the channel as well. Just check under the Dark Sun side. I had a blast running through this stuff, and it's been a childhood dream of mine to actually play this. So uh, it was really good, and I enjoyed it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it too. Thank you.